Now, some political scientists are advocating that consensus building be made a priority for the NPP and the NDC before the December polls. Interacting with Roland Walker on the main sticking point, Professor Ransford Jampo and Dr. Sedu Ali Dubuf of the University of Ghana Political Science Department said the similarity in policy proposals of the NPP and the NDC underscored the need to clearly communicate their intentions to the electorate to enable them make a clear choice on the voting day. I take pride in the fact the free SHS and free TVET have been delivered. We'll provide infrastructure for accelerated development and we'll fix the economy as we unite against poverty. Just 89 days to the elections and it looks like the launch of the manifesto of the two main parties has now turned the scales towards a full campaign mood before December. Social media and the spread of the internet has made access to information easier and even more of a good benchmark in assessing candidates for voters to make a choice. For political scientists, creating ideas should be directly linked to their implementation and full outputs. Ghana's two main political parties, the MPP and NDC, have now officially launched their party manifestos for the elections. The talk about town is how also they can communicate to their various target voters what the content of these manifestos are and how well they can make the right choices to either get themselves voted back into power. But the big question is, how should the two parties live together, create the needed congenial atmosphere before we get to vote on December 7, 2020? We decided to come to the campus of the University of Ghana, speak to two of Ghana's topmost political science lecturers, and also have a bigger perspective how we need to have this conversation and how the two can collaborate to create the right atmosphere for the elections. Dr. Ali Duseidu teaches political science at Ghana's premier university. For him, the MPP and NDC seem to have little differences in ideology. We tend to see the MPP's manifesto as being less of promises and they're more of emphasizing what they have done within the last four years, but also talking about what they will do when they are given the opportunity. If you compare that one to the manifesto of a party in opposition, you, you tend to see that the NDC's manifesto is more promissory, is full of several promises. Because one, they, they have the opportunity to govern before, in the, in the last four years. But because they want to come to power, they tend to see that everything that a section of the citizens want, they want to find a solution to it. Close by is political scientist Professor Ransford Jampo, who also heads Youth Bridge Research Institute. He believes how manifesto content could be achieved should be a priority to all the parties. MPP, everything that they have said, borders on governance. Okay, governance simply means steering the affairs of a state. It shows the party's um, renewed focus to appeal to a certain section of the elites in the population, whilst at the same time remaining as a mass party. And so I, I thought it was something that was good. What becomes an important part of the manifesto narrative is a consensus that has to be built before the polls in December. Ideologically, the lines between the NDC as a social democratic party and MPP as a liberal democratic party is now getting so bled, very murkier. Sim because these two parties are now traditionally converging towards the center. So the difference would have been that an NPP manifesto would have been kind of more liberal democratic in orientation, empowering the private sector, building individual capacities, and then all those things, then emphasizing the market. And then the MPP, NDC should have been focusing so much on the, on the downtrodden, social intervention policies, poverty alleviation initiatives. But you now see that because of the, the quick dividends of winning power, you tend to see the, most of them now moving away from the extreme ends and now converging towards the middle. A descending voter will want to see the difference between these two political parties. To be able to ensure effective dialogue um, between um, the 
presidential aspirants in a manner that douses tension. We should have an independent body springing up to say that, well, I want to give you this platform, dialogue among themselves, maybe through a debate.